Good afternoon and welcome to the three o'clock news. Our lead story this afternoon concerns the shocking information about poor hand hygiene in primary schools. It has been discovered that on entry to school, one of the main risks to children in the five to seven year age range in terms of their physical health and well-being, which also impacts upon both social and emotional well-being, is the risk of respiratory and gastrointestinal infection caused as a result of poor hand hygiene. It is therefore believed that in an early stage it is important to teach children about how hand hygiene reduces the risks of cross-contamination. The Department for Education and Skills state that in their first year of school all pupils should be taught to maintain personal hygiene and how some diseases can be spread and controlled. This information came from Kogan in 2007. Some statistics that we have found indicate that 164 million school days are lost each year due to illness. Half of all men and a quarter of women fail to wash their hands after they have been to the toilet. Damp hands can spread 1,000 times more germs than dry hands. And germs can stay alive on hands for up to three hours. And did you know that we have between 2 and 10 million bacteria living between our fingertip and elbow? Oof. Wash the bottom, then clean in between. Then wash off the soap with warm water. Then dry your hands. Congratulations, now you have very clean hands. Wow, clean hands! In our health promotion message, we have tried to cover the three spheres of health promotion according to Tannehill 1996. Firstly, education. By influencing knowledge and attitudes, that is by teaching them the easy steps to hand washing and the reasons behind it. Secondly, prevention. Through reducing or avoiding the risk of diseases, giving the message that poor hand washing can lead to disease with the intention that illness will be reduced by good hand washing. And finally, protecting, by safeguarding our population through social measures, trying to get the children to take personal responsibility. In an ideal world, we would evaluate our health promotion message in the following ways. Through process evaluation. What do the children who have seen the promotion programme think about it? Can they remember any of the key messages? Impact evaluation. Has the programme had its intended response in that has it changed hand washing behaviour? We move on then to structural evaluation. Are there the resources to deliver the programme? For example, do the children have access to the internet? And finally, developmental evaluation. 
Is this programme feasible? Is there time in the children's day to deliver it? And are there appropriate facilities for the children to wash and dry their hands?